what I wanted to just look at and just talk about is um, the idea of, you know, we looked at a few weeks back, Jesus as the Word of God and in John's Gospel and how he came unto his own, his own received him not, how he's the light of the world, how he's the light of life of the world, how he's the word that holds all things together by him, for him, all things are created. And and just kind of look at Jesus and what um, he came to show us. Um, uh, you know, he, he talked about how if you've seen him, you've seen the Father. Um, there's verses that talk about how everything he said, everything he did was from the Father. He only said and did what the Father said and did and that he came to show us the father and uh show us who god was and so i just want to take a, a look at that a little bit and and see how deep we get into it and just kind of explore it a little bit because uh, as i mentioned a few weeks ago um you know john the baptist came and he was he was separated he was he was out in the wilderness you know he dressed funny talked funny whatever you know he he wore um uh the camel skin and ate locust and wild honey and you know lived in in the desert and was very separated and you know they said he was just um uh, well how did they say it um well he didn't know god and then jesus came they said well he's a drunkard and he's hanging out with sinners and and it was like either extreme they were like they did they didn't accept him they don't they didn't want to see them for who they were and accept them for who they were because if they didn't fit uh, their idea of who God was, their idea of what righteousness was, then they were rejecting him. And, and it's, it's a, a common thing that we can fall into. And, and, of course, the religious leaders of today will do the same thing. Uh, you know, if someone doesn't look the way they say they have to look, talk the way they have to talk, you know, dress the way, whatever, read the right Bible, go to the right church, who knows, whatever it is, you know, then it's not God. Uh, and we need to be at a place in our life so we accept God for who he is. We accept Jesus for who he is and, and, and how he shows us God. And, um, you know, it, the same thing would happen today. Jesus comes on the scene today and there would be many people that claim to be Christian or claim to know God that would reject Jesus because he wouldn't do it the way they say that he should do it. Um, and so I just want to kind of look at uh, Jesus' life a little bit and um, who he was, what he did, and, and just kind of explore that and how it can apply to our lives. So uh, Matthew chapter uh, 3, um, and I'll start in verse 13. Um, this is when Jesus came uh, from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. And I'm, I'm reading from the New International Version. It's, but John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized of you, uh, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice of heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. <clears throat> kind of start there and then, then go deeper into it. And this is the the turning point in jesus life um up until this point you know he was he was a good jewish kid um he was taking care of his mom he uh fit in with society just fine um people knew him as a matter of fact as he starts to move into uh his position as son of god into his calling as the messiah as he starts to move forth in that anointing which he will do after this point um people start to reject him primarily because they knew him one of the one of the things that they were like wait we know jesus we know his brothers and sisters we know his mom we're like you know he's nothing special uh what, what is he doing uh why does he think that he that he's somebody special even his brothers and sisters you know kind of were like um what are you trying to do who are you um but when he was baptized by john the baptist there was a change. He's like, now I am going to move forth as the Messiah. Now I'm going to move forth as the Son of God, uh, not just the Son of Man. Uh, now I'm going to move forth in the anointing that he had in his life. He was anointed by God. Um, and the way we see that anointing is the Holy Spirit comes down and remains on him. Um, and then we hear a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And 
uh, individuals that don't believe in the Trinity of God, God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I mean, right here it's on display. We see the Holy Spirit, we see Jesus being baptized, and we hear the voice of the Father from heaven. And, you know, it, it wasn't Jesus being a ventriloquist and, you know, casting his voice or something weird like that. Um, this is the, the Trinity at work. And, and as Jesus uh, comes forth, uh, with that anointing now, the, the first thing he does in, in chapter 4, um, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. That's one of those understatements in the Bible, huh? <laughs> you don't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. You're hungry. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for. I'm ready for some of them locusts and wild honey. I'm. <laughs> I'm ready to eat something. Twenty. Yeah. And 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 the way it's worded too in the Greek when it talks about Jesus being being tempted in the desert, it sounds like for forty days and forty nights the devil was there kind of tempting him. Uh, now we'll read uh, three main areas where he tempts him here in just a second. But um, it, what a way to start your walk with God? What a way is it to start your calling as the Messiah, as the one chosen by God to, to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords and Deliverer and uh, King of the Jews and all this stuff. What a way to start. Don't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. Be tempted by the, by the enemy. Um, whoa, <laughs> not so good. And in our lives, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that uh, we will face in our lives is we make commitments to God as we move forward in callings that God has in our lives. The enemy will try to come in and tempt us. The enemy will try to come in and steal uh, those blessings from our lives. And we need to learn uh, from Jesus and say, you know, it's not about our flesh. It's not about whether we're eating or drinking or we're comfortable or we have any of those types of things. It's about the kingdom of God. and It's about serving God. And, and we need to be willing to, to step aside from some things sometimes in our lives to really see what matters, really see what, what is of value. Because if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we're going to be satisfied. Uh, if all we ever hunger and thirst for is just our flesh being satisfied, our self being satisfied, you, you know, we're never going to get to a place of total contentment. Uh, no matter how much you have, I mean, you think about it, you know, uh, uh, Grace was mentioning, you know, a friend that's in the drugs and stuff, and it's like, no matter how much you get, no matter how many times you get high or how high you get, you always got to have more. You got to always go deeper. You always got to have more. Um, you know, it, it, that's the thing that people fall into with, with pornography and all different things. You're never going to be satisfied when you're feeding the flesh. The flesh is always going to want more, always going to be hungry for more. And we need to find ways to, to, to step out of that and not be looking to satisfy those things. Because if we're walking in the spirit, though, and satisfying the spirit, we can come to places where we'll be satisfied. We can come to places where we'll be full. Uh, I think of Jesus, you know, there was a time later in his ministry where he's kind of hungry and thirsty. And he's, he's talking to a Samaritan woman at the well and his disciples come, you know, and they're, they're worried about getting him food and all this stuff. And he's like, my food is to do the will of the Father. And, he, and he's actually at a point where he's kind of satisfied uh, in his flesh and stuff, not because he ate, but because he was giving to someone else, because he was sharing with someone else, and because he was helping. And it actually led to the whole village kind of coming uh, to know him as the Messiah. Um, and, and that's a, a kind of attitude that we can have in our lives and, and, and in our walk. 